Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Jeff Fritz. It is February 17th, 2018. Welcome back to the stream. Oh my goodness. It has been... It hasn't been that long since we've been together, has it? We did that workshop yesterday, and... And I hope you learned a lot about .NET. And I'm really happy to come back and follow up on learning a bit about ASP.NET and have my guest today, Maria Nagaga. Hey, Maria! Hey, Jeff! Thank you so much for joining me. How uh, happy to do it. So, uh, do you want to give the quick, the quick two minute, the, the quick two, two sentence, three sentence bio who you are? Yeah, definitely. I always find bios weird because it's like bragging, but not bragging. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I am a uh, senior program manager on um, our team, on the Visual Studio.net team. And my entire thing is how do we get net new developers excited on the platform? So people who are either learning how to code for the very first time or non.NET devs um, who want to get this introduction to all this cool stuff that .NET Core has to offer and C Sharp and the general family. I'm also um, the owner of Try.NET, which we're going to talk about today, which I'm really yes. excited about. Oh really my gosh. About yeah, because I pitched it and people listened to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that always feels good when you've when you've got an idea, when you've got a, a concept for for something to to move the needle, right? Whether yeah. it's sell more product, get more people interested in your product, whether in marketing or sales, and and folks say, yeah, let's do this. That's a great idea, and you get to actually work on that. Very yeah, cool you stuff. Get to work on it, you get to build it. It was a, it's been a really nice experience so far, and uh, we've got really good. Like, We've got really good response for it. And now we've gone from like, we're experimenting to people saying, we want it right now. We literally have people saying, throwing money, fictional money at mm. us to, to start implementing this on um, outside of the Microsoft platform. They're, they're throwing budget at you. Budget, uh, yes. <laughs> budget, take you, this budget. You don't actually yeah. get money, but you can nope. spend it. <laughs> You can spend this money. We give you uh, permission to use these many credits of Azure. Just like, thank you so much. Yes, Azure credits. They're, um, they're, they're like poker chips. Oh gosh, that's a green poker chip. That's a bad idea because I've got the chroma key. There you go. They're like poker chips, but and we need like Microsoft poker chips. Yes, look, I have budget. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to spend this. All right. This stream's all about doing co writing code together, learning yeah. some new things. So let's go over to, let me go over to our code here. There we go. And of course I've yeah. got, I've got everybody's favorite browser, Microsoft yeah. Azure open here. There we go. So now we can see everything looking good. Fantastic. And we've got some folks in the chat room this morning. Good morning, Justin. Good morning, everyone. There's uh, there's our friend Bruno from Brazil. Yes, at, at today's hat. <laughs> I'm wearing my first Linux hat, so this is uh, old school. Red, red hat, hat. Yeah, I got that right. Two reds, two hats. You, you, you did it well this time, yeah. <laughs> and so, okay, we got that right. Um, and for some reason, OBS didn't didn't reload my, my goal information all the way here. Let's see if we can get that reloaded real quick. Um, and it's gonna take its good old time loading for me. That's nice. Um, all right, so I have Edge open here and we wanna talk about try.net and, yep. and trying.net for the first time. Folks who, who logged into the stream yesterday, they had to download an SDK. If they wanted a cool text editor with IntelliSense, yeah. they could get Visual Studio Code or they could, they could dive in and use Visual Studio Community. But try.net's different, isn't it? It's different because it's the ability for you to start writing .NET and C Sharp code right in the browser. Right now, it's only C Sharp support, okay. but we do have plans, and, and I'll take questions about that later, on how we plan to support F Sharp and VB in the future. But right now, you can build a console application right in the browser, and we are working over this sprint to actually do an ASP.NET Core application in the browser as well, which is really exciting. That, I'm really excited yeah. about that. So, uh, so right to be able to write code in the browser and then and then it doesn't compile in the browser no okay so you, you send it off there's a there's a compute somewhere out there in the cloud in azure that'll yep. compile it and it'll deliver you the results yeah and we're using um containers and azure container instances to spin up the containers really really fast so when a user does come on to 
the platform, one of the biggest concerns is like my security, is this my own private container? Yes, you actually have your own private instance of a, con a Docker container where you are running this information. And to make sure that we don't have people like misuse compute time, um, we have all these security policies in place and um, we're going to be writing a really nice detailed blog post on the things that we've done to mm -hmm. make it secure. Um, because one of the biggest things that getting, writing things like this isn't, um, the biggest hurdle. There's so many great people out there who have done this, um, and we have to acknowledge that people have done this with .NET Fiddle, and there's so many oh, others. Yeah, who've done it. there's stuff like um, CodePen also, and all these great people, JSBin, and you should read the articles from. Um, I forget the person who created JSBin, but he wrote this incredibly great article about how um, how the security measures he had to put in place afterwards, and how you know he had the FBI banging at his door because people were misusing compute time. Ooh. And, <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, it was scary, right? But it was. These are all things that took our team a really long time to make sure that we were security compliant, to make sure that no one was going to misuse or abuse the system, and to make sure that our users were just safe when using try.net. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. Okay, so, so I mean, where is try.net? Is it, it isn't as easy as just try.net. No, it's okay. Don't laugh at us. It is try dot. Try dot yeah. D O T dot N E T. N E T. Yeah. Okay. But we're going to work on it. So this is it in its raw form. And currently, um, actually last night and this morning, I've been working on a, a nice looking homepage because people are beginning to Google it and they get this. You so mean they've been, actually, they've been binging it in their the, Microsoft oh, sorry, edge browser. Been binging it. Yeah. They've been binging it, um, or Googling <laughs> with Bing, um, depending on what you use, but they've been binging it. Okay. And been bringing them to this page but we want to make sure that people are aware of what the product is and landing it pretty well so, so yeah i mean th this is th this is pretty neat it looks like i'm literally right in a text editor I've you got, are uh, i am i mean uh, line numbers down the side here and i, I can click and highlight things I mean, why don't I you try writing something in there stop it stop it do it do it console right line who's, who's the last person to write something in the chat room hello bruno uh and it's a six on the end there we go yep just there we go and okay so there's a for loop and i wrote it in the middle of the for loop okay pretty and cool it's a Fibonacci sequence so it's going to come up but um just one of the things that you must have noticed is um, i started getting intelligence sense. yeah Right, and if you also notice that it also, if you type it again, what you're beginning to see is it's also a richer IntelliSense that you're getting because we've been running experiments on something um, called Pythia. That's what it's called internally, and what it does is that um, based on the way people use it, we can actually start making intelligent decisions using AI on what would most likely come next. So it's beginning to learn the way you're thinking. Okay, hang on. Time out. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, yeah. using AI to figure out what are the most common things that people want to use for IntelliSense. It's not yeah. just these are all the methods and properties hanging off of this object that you dotted. No. Okay. Yeah. That's and, and folks in the chat room. Oh my lord. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. Okay. And we're just at the beginning of this. Um, it's an experiment that we've been running just just to see if we can help the learning experience as well because I. When I was first introduced to IntelliSense, I didn't know what to pick because I wasn't, when I first learned how to code, I was in Uganda, I had Visual Studio. Okay. I didn't have e like regular access to internet. So I'd see all these IntelliSense things pop up and I was like, I don't know what, I don't know what to pick. I really don't know what to pick. I don't sure. know. Sure. So it was just basically trying um, back and forth. And this was back in 2006. Six. Okay. So, like, Visual Studio wasn't like, but it was very. Um, oh, it was, it was early. Great, yeah, it was really early. Um, but yeah, uh, so Visual Studio to... Express wasn't even a thing at that point. No. It was just Visual Studio 2005, and you will like .NET 2.0. That's yeah. your choice. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so those things. So, if you actually, if people want to like paste in like C-sharp features that they would like to see running in the browser. We can actually paste those in and they are actually, like you can do tuples in here okay. because we work in line with what is the latest. So one of the biggest things people have always asked us is 
what version of C sharp are you do you support? Sure, sure. The latest. We are always going to be up to date. Okay, that hang on. So let me do something like public. Um, let me do int int, and let's just do uh, let's call it method aggregate or something, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put together a, just a list of numbers. Uh, var numbers equals uh, new int, right? And then if we do uh, throw some numbers out of your chat room, give me a couple numbers here. I'm gonna start with two, four, 17. Ten, 17. Give me a check. Give me one. Um, while while I'm waiting for some numbers, uh, Zax is asking, uh, will we be getting ways to share code in a link form or invite other people to write code with you? Oh man, uh, Zach has put us in the future. So yes, actually, what we are working on. So Diego, who is a new engineer on our team, we're working on two new features. One of them is the ability to load your gist from GitHub okay. um, onto try.net and we will run it for you. And we actually have that working and you'll probably see it on the site next week. Okay. Um, another thing that we are working on is the ability to actually take the, the iframe um, and embed it into your blog as well. And we'll show examples of that that we have on docs. So oh, in terms cool. of inviting others to write code with you, that is not something that we're explore exploring at the moment because of VS Live, VS the VS Code Live Share, right? Because that already exists. Yeah. Sure. It feels like it feels like this could be a natural extension of that to even yeah. share with folks who who aren't um, who don't have a Visual Studio installed. Yeah. But not that not that that's on on the radar, but that feels. It's a thought. It's oh a my thought. gosh! It's yes. A, it's a thought, definitely. Um, it's something that we definitely need to discuss with the VS Code team because. One of the things that we want to make sure is, and I just want to set this for everyone as well, is that we're not trying to replicate um, VS in the browser. Sure. Oh my gosh. I completely agree, right? Visual Studio has its place as a full, as a full editor or as a full IDE, but yeah. right, as some something, you know, hey, let's just poke around with some C Sharp here in the browser. Um, this is really cool. Let me see if my aggregate method actually works here. Uh, did I do it right? Did he? Let's see. Maybe. Maybe I didn't. Right? That, so I'm returning. Yeah. What are you returning? Yeah, there we go. Yes, 2, 13, did. and 7. So that's the sum of it. And there were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 numbers. First, yes. Very cool. Okay. So we have noticed, and, and I'm, I'm glad it's also popped up. I have noticed that sometimes when doing mathematical computations of any sort it can be a little bit slower um yeah but you know what i could take my ipad and use this you know yeah you can you can um one thing that we really want to be able to do is um have a better experience on mobile devices and mobile browsers mm. because mm. it's a little bit monaco in the because this is all monaco by the way like you're working in a monaco editor um monaco right now doesn't really support mobile browsers. So a lot of our GitHub issues, and we've been working with the Monaco team on what we can do mm -hmm. as a try.net team to make this experience better. Because um, Peter, who is one of the engineers on the team, and I were very passionate about education and the ability for people to have education anywhere. And if you look at the developing world, a lot of people are learning on their devices. So we want oh to make gosh, sure yes. that this is a great experience for them as well. Yeah. Um, um, oh, what was the program from a couple of years ago? The what was it? One laptop, one child. What was yes. that called? Right. And, uh, and and they were giving. It was a hand crank laptop or something, so they could get energy into it. But it was, I mean, it had a low end version of Linux and it was running a browser. But here's a way for us to give the latest .NET zero install. That's terrific. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we're, we're, I'm very excited about where it's going. And if you actually go over, put a docs at the end of that. Like, uh, at the end of the address URL. bar. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. So, like, if you are wild and crazy, you... Not wild and crazy, that's a right, wrong term. But, mm -hmm. wild and but crazy. this shows all the things that we currently support right now and how okay. you would actually host the iframe. Okay, so if we wanted, if we wanted to... Put this inside of an iframe, put it on, on our blog, put it inside some documentation because maybe we built a product that supports a .NET API and we want folks to be able to, to feel that API inside the browser. I can just embed this. 
Yes, you can. Okay. Um, before we go forward, um, Zach, is it Zach? Sorry, yeah, Zach underscore DK. Yeah. Will you add pastebin support also? What are you referring to pastebin by that? So right, pastebin is is one of those websites where you can just share text, and folks can can get a link to just a block of text that's hanging out there on the web somewhere. All right, have you mm -hmm. seen it? right? You know what? If I go right, is it pastebin.com? Is that what it is? Yeah. So it's, oh, I've never seen this before. Yeah, so right, it's a free location. You can sign in. There's some syntax highlighting for, it's only syntax highlighting, right? It doesn't actually do anything. But if I'm, if I'm, and, and Zach, chime in here in the chat room, it, it might be neat to be able to take some code that's here. Okay. And, and be able to either, well, if you copy and paste it out of here over to try.net, that, eh. But if I could take my try.net entry and say, save to paste bin, right? If there's oh. a button or something and have it create an entry over here with me already signed in or something, that's not bad. I, I, I need to, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, Cause I had never heard of paste bin. I was like, what, what is paste bin? But I, I think, um, I think standby reloading there, the last message in, in the Twitch chat room is exactly what one of the scenarios that you're looking at. It's basically a gist. Okay, so it's it's like um, another form that we, we okay. Right, but um, right and. And I am taking notes so that people know I actually am taking. I love this communication. Oh yes. my gosh, yes. Yeah. Any uh, folks in the chat room, if you have ideas, if right, Maria's you know trying to figure this out. Where do we take this? Please comment. You know, we're we are. We're listening. Yeah. Well, listen, and also it's in such it's in the such the early stages of it. And we are really building, like this was in a community inspired product, like a purely community inspired product. So as we begin to build it, we want to continue that the community um, continues to inspire us. If that makes sense, it almost sounds oh my so gosh, cheesy. Yes. It sounds so cheesy, but it's what it is. It is. Um, right. Then Pastebin has a bunch of ads around it and okay, your, your, your mileage may vary, you know, some people might be all right with that. I, I don't, I don't think we're trying to place advertisements around this. This is not at all. Th this is Microsoft doing an outreach to say, Hey, everybody can learn how to code, right? Yep. Anyone can learn how to code. And not only that, like experiment, like easily experiment with this as you would like. So I presented this at NDC and the, I think the biggest fan that came out of NDC from this was, uh, John Skeet, who was like, I Wait, love this, love this. The so John Skeet, Stack the Overflows, Stack John Overflow. Skeet, who sometimes works at Google. Who works, sometimes works at Google, was <laughs> at, right at the front of my talk and Hanselman was next door and I was like, oh, you're here instead of Hanselman's talk. And he, he loved it. He said, not only is this a great um, learning tool, it's mm -hmm. also evolving just by from learning. It's people improving their documentation scenarios. It's people being able to experiment in the browser um there so I've, I've had a lot of people saying how can i begin to have a code pen scenario and one of the first things that i did when i talked to when i when we're building try.net is i talked to code pen i mm. reached out to code pen i said if we built an asp.net core experience would you use it and their reaction was so positive they said absolutely i would implement something like this so, um... Awesome. So, uh, there's one comment there from a uh, soft engineer. This would be awesome for job candidate testing. Yes. We, we happen to know folks at a place called LinkedIn. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, and, and we've been talking to LinkedIn on how they can integrate this. Also, Skype interviews has um, an experience as well. So, okay. have you heard of Skype interviews? I've, I, I have not. I haven't, I haven't had to interview for a few years. Yeah, you know, I'm very... <laughs> <laughs> it's... Uh, but Skype interviews does have this um, experience where you can do um, code sharing, like interview in one section and the person interviewing in the other section, and you can actually do unit tests across it. And we actually supporting the C-sharp scenario. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so there's a couple questions about what are some of the other things that you can do with this that are different from .NET Fiddle. So I, I only opened the docs here, you know, what else is going on in here, you know? So a couple of things that you do can do as well. One of the things that we wanted to make sure with try.net is for someone to have the ability to completely customize and set their <clears throat> theme as they would like. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, if you look at other platforms where you can embed a similar scenario, you have to compile, like you have to stay in line with the themes that they provide. Mm -hmm. um, that's completely in it. So if you click on one of the, so let's see if set, I, I, I put, let's click set custom theme. All right, so down here, set yeah. custom theme. And that should affect, what should that affect? It should have affected that window. This one so up here. You, yeah. So if you go down to the bottom of the page, what did the message log give us? So there's a little message log down here. Yeah, as you can see, a dev clearly built this. Um, <laughs> By putting their stack trace right here in the middle. Let me move this over so it's out from behind my, my ugly head here. There we go. Yeah, so I'm I'm literally in your product, Maria. No, kidding. you're in my product. You're in it. You're in its face. Uh, <laughs> so over there, you did click the button. It, yeah. Did you refresh the page? And let's see, maybe it did change the theme, and I did not notice. Oh, okay. So now I've got bold green for yeah. all of my uh, um, all of my uh, keywords. Yeah. Okay. And we can define new themes. You can define new themes. You can use the existing predefined themes with people like. Um, so if you type in there, okay. No, that one that didn't change. No, what did it say? Uh, it said, oh. "Oh, comments foreground are red, and the font style is italic." So let's put in a so comment. Let's show that. This is a comment. So it's not red. It's actually orange, unless my 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 eyes are deceiving me. Uh. But yeah, it is it is a bit orange. Oh, so, maybe. Yeah. But um, I mean, we can change the the way that it looks. We can change the way that it feels. Yep, you can change. You can really customize. If you look at the dot dot net experience and the dot dot net page, they completely customize it to what they want. So do mm. the docs team as well. Okay. So it's the ability to customize it. Um, someone's asked something about if we would support the loading of NuGet packages. Yes. Really? Okay. So I could um, I could load in, right? I could I could load in whatever. Uh, I'm trying to think of something that would be so, good to bring in. So currently, the version that is in production and live right now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. does not support NuGet packages, but we do have working examples, and I showcased one at um, NDC. And if you watch my NDC video, I don't know if it's up. Um, don't look at the crowds because everyone went to have someone's talk and I haven't forgiven him yet. Um, but if you NDC, go... NDC, London. Yeah. 2018, oh, Maria. We're already showing your face here. Oh, yeah. That, that's a bit <laughs> redundant. Like, I'm already, I'm already live. Um, um, Sinclair Nader is asking about using uh, loading JSON.net. Um, if you, yes, um, that is actually something that we have experimented on internally. So if you go no, into... video's not here. Okay. Yeah, so video's not here. But um, in the in the, the NDC demo I did, mm -hmm. we were actually um, in try.net, right in the browser, we pulled in the Twilio NuGet packages, and we se I sent text to people right in okay. the room. Okay. So, so you were using a custom, uh, right, a, a dev state deployment of this, right? Not the one that's yep. publicly available. And you sent text messages writing code in the browser to yep. folks. In, okay. Very, very cool. I love that level of interaction where folks that are sitting in a, um, sitting in a session, right? When they go to a, an interactive live session like that, and they, they can actually feel whatever code it is you're writing on screen, whether we do that with signal R types of demos, but sending text messages to people, that's kind of crazy. Okay. It's always fun. Um, I did tell them before, I said, make sure that when you upload this, you hide everyone's number. Yeah. They've got um, a... But yes, did I pulled in the NuGet package, the Twilio NuGet package, I wrote the code, I added the, um, all the, like I set up the API for Twilio, I got the secret codes, I did everything on stage and it was working. Okay, and so you had all the all the stuff to configure keys sitting in here as well as the, the actual execution sending a text message. Yeah. That's awesome stuff. And folks are saying upvote new get support. <laughs> no, and the, it actually came from, the reason why we thought about NuGet support is that when we first were doing try.net, 
the NuGet team reached out to us and said, um, we would like to use try.net to test our NuGet packages. And we're like, hmm. Interesting. It's like we should just support it because it's it's growing and growing beyond what we thought it would be used for. A lot of people are using it for a lot of interesting things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think we also, yeah. Go ahead. Oh no, I was going to say I, I when we were talking to uh, to Myra Wenzel, she was saying that some of this is embedded in Docs, Microsoft.com already. Yeah. Oh, have you seen? Have you guys already seen it? I we we looked at it briefly a, a week or two ago with with yeah. Myra. Let me bring that up. So, so if you go over to the .NET documentation. All right, so I'll click on the .NET. And then, and is it in the API reference or is it in? So we also have it in the API references. Um, okay. But let's look at the quick starts first because oh, that's sure. where we started. Um, get um, started here. So if you actually go to quick start, so C Sharp Guide Quick Start. Oh, down here. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we need to brand it back to tutorial so people will know exactly where to go. Mm. Um, and you go to Hello World. All right. Or any of those. Any of those will give you an actual. You will learn how to run your first C-sharp program, declare and use variables, work with strings, blah, 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 blah. Do so it. think about this in the old days. If you wanted to do this in the old days, you'd have to, and someone showed you console.writeline, and let's say you downloaded Visual Studio, you opened up a brand new template, you plug this in, because you don't know you have to use using um, statements, and we actually hide that all for you. For, for you. Yeah, um, oh yeah. It's already it's already in the code, and then so setting up a program CS program and CS a project and all, type. You don't know you don't know any of this stuff, and you're just like, where do people where do people need to be on this scale before mm -hmm. you actually introduce them to all the nitty and gritty stuff that makes their programs really really cool? So um, you can copy this over, and this is all customizable. So you see the editor itself over uh, here. That is try.net embedded. Okay. As you see that they could add their own run button. You can specify what your output is. So most people use a text, just like a simple print a te text mm -hmm, in their mm -hmm. output. Somebody else showed me an example where they are trying to implement it with a separate version of Monaco. So you can really do what you want here. And, so, and just to call back, Monaco is the code name for the, the text editor embedded in a browser that has the syntax highlighting. Yeah, and Monaco is also in VS Code. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, so so you're literally getting the improvements that v, the the .dot .net uh, uh, project is is benefiting from those same improvements that folks are contributing to the VS Code text editor. Exactly. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so I always tell people as VS Code improves, so does try.net. Yes. Yeah, and we also, um, my team is also responsible. We also own um, OmniSharp, the OmniSharp for VS Code as well. So okay. we own Sharp extension. So a couple comments here. Let's just take a look, a quick look at the chat room. Um, how is the security hardening on the interactivity from the code on try.net? Oh. Oh, I'm, I'm thankful Barry's asleep right now and not hanging out here. <laughs> so how is, security, how, how is security hardening on the interactive from? So how are we doing it? Is that the question, Sinclair? How's the, how's the experience been? Oh, the experience. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's just say, like, is this, is this um, always on your Twitch channel and Barry could watch this afterwards? <laughs> It's it's an experience, isn't it? It's it's a learning experience. It's, it's a huge learning experience. So one, the biggest thing was threat modeling, and I really never thought I would do threat modeling outside of school. It was the first time I'd done a threat model since leaving university. Mm. When I was in university, and we did um, what was it called? I, think, I can't remember what the entire course was called, but it was an elective for CS students, and we had to do a threat model. And Microsoft internally, we have a tool where you actually put your architectural diagram in, you put all these different lines, and then it gives you a list of like a hundred things you need to go and fix. Oh. And yeah. you have to continuously update those instances every single time. Whenever you do a new deployment, you whenever you change your architecture. Every single time. So for example, we are going back, one of the reasons why you don't see the NuGet um, 
packages support in production and the GIS support in production yet is because we actually have to go back to our architectural diagram because we have all these external links coming in. We have to think about their security, we have to think about our security, and then we have to go and represent it to Barry Dorns. Yes. Yeah, but he's, he's a, I don't understand how he does it. You sent him like a list of like, I, the first time I did it, it had 80, 80 items that we had to do. Mm. And I sent the architectural diagram. And within 10 minutes, he had feedback on every single item. Wow. And I was like, how, 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 I was like, how, how did you do this? But he did say it was the most detailed architectural diagram he had ever seen. And I was like, oh, thank you very much. Lucky. Uh, like, I was really, really like, that's the most detailed security I've ever seen. And Sinclair Nader followed up and said, um, what, how do you protect against folks trying to write malicious code? Are there things that folks aren't allowed to do from the try.net uh, editor? So a couple of things that we're working on, one of them was to make sure that we have this concept of like your container is thrown away mm. after a certain period of time, but you as a user will never see that. We also are working on some, no, we work, we already have it. Um, it's called the cryptographic proof of work. Mm. So even if you're trying to co steal compute time, there is some... <laughs> crypto work that you have to do like if you're a hacker to do in the background for you to even get that so it's just even it won't even happen um okay. and, and those are things that um you will see um ty over over by and peter puskowski on my team doing presentations on in the future because i told him i think this is very useful for what we're doing right now so they've built facilities to limit access to the processor whether it's percentage of processors that you're trying to get a hold of or um, the duration of process or trying to get something just running constantly out there in the background for free. Exactly. And we also do currently right now, because we also have, we don't have that many users or that, that many people who are implementing it personally on their sites right now that we have to whitelist every single person who's using it currently. Mm. As we begin to enter these blog scenarios of people having embedded um, try.net with a GIST loader, there's additional stuff that we are putting in place to make sure that that's safe for you as well. Cool. Yeah, because um, Sinclair Nader makes it makes a good. Um, no, that wasn't that. Uh, Software engineer says it'd be great to be able to embed with GitHub and Bitbucket docs. I guess with your wiki that you have there for your open source project. Yep. My gosh, anywhere you have documentation around a .NET code or project that you're publishing, this is perfect to be able to say, here, try it now. So actually, I do have, and, and I don't know, do, do, do people share their screen during your... I haven't done, I haven't tried that yet. Um, okay, maybe I'll send like a, a, no, actually, we do have this thing that we have right now, and we showed it over to Phil Hack, and he was like, this is amazing! Phil Hack is over at GitHub, and it, was he the original ASP.NET? MVC. Yeah. MVC PM? Yeah. Yeah, he's old school. Uh, <laughs> he's not watching. But I showed it, I sh we showed him a demo of what we're doing. And the idea is you have your gist um, mm -hmm. and we get your gist ID. Um, we plug it into try.net. It grabs your gist and it then runs it. But you can always go back to your original gist to actually edit it as you would like. You can make it read only. You can make it so that the people on your blog can edit it. So you're effectively putting a, a run this code button on a gist. Yes. That's awesome. Okay. And I, I, he looked at it and he was like, "Will when will this support entire GitHub project? And I was like, this is just the response we needed. This is, that's it. The, but it, it, when, I, when I think about trying to run an entire GitHub project, right? And I've, I've got some projects that I've worked on here on stream that we've, that, that are hanging out there. My gosh, to, to have something that would download the entire repository compile it and then put you know if it's if it's not console driven what's it going to show on the console you know what i mean to be able to to run the project you know there, there's all kinds of questions i have about okay what do i see in my browser when i click run project from github there's that's a very hard question it's a and it's also a very hard like even from the pm perspective of me pming what this is going to be like also, where do we, we draw the line? That's a huge thing. Where do you draw the line where um, you should just tell someone, go and open this on your machine? Yeah. 
um, how much, because we do support multi -file, multiple multiple files. Um, we okay. do have that. And it's something that uh, John Sakara, who is the architect for try.net. I'm just a visionary and the person who said, let's make this. But um, John John has been the person who has architected and followed my vision to a T. And these are things that him and I do like do have conversa very long conversations about, right? Is um, what does multiple file support look like? What does the UI look like? Um, how far do we go where someone can actually run their ASP.NET core application in the browser? Um, yeah. So those those are those are those are huge 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 things and if people have thoughts and conversations like um, do we do razor pages not do MVC do we do everything or do we limit the number of um, pages that you can add to this so it's a mm. it's an ongoing process like because when you release it you want people to be happy yeah what's what's the uh, web application that the Stack Overflow folks have written that you can go and you can build projects live in the uh, in the website. The Stack Overflow did this? It's the Fog Creek folks. Oh, you mean Glitchbeam? Glitch, that's it. No, sorry, it's Glitch, it's not Glitchbeam. Glitchbeam is someone's Twitter handle. I don't know why I keep on saying that. Um, uh, if, one second, in the chat room, I'm going to whitelist the try.net URL. It's gonna block you from using that. One second, I will enable that, but go ahead, Maria. Yeah, so Glitch does have node support. Isn't it only node applications? I think so. Um, and I feel like Glitch is really for the creative space similar to CodePen. So I think it's more in that space. So it's, is it just not Glitch TV show, just Glitch? Yeah, that's what showed up for me as well. That's a great show, by the way. There we go. Glitch is the friendly community where you can build the app of your dreams. Yeah, and I thought it was mostly Node.js. Yeah, Node apps or websites. There isn't, you can't do .NET here yet. Yes. And the whole point is that we, we should be, try.net, our, our goal is that if Glitch and CodePen and Udacity and Pluralsights and LinkedIn Learning want to in, like, light up these experiences, we will have them for you. Our, our, our idea, and I always tell people, they're like, how do you compete? I was like, no, 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 no. It's, about, it's not about compete. It's about enabling scenarios. So once we have the ASP.NET scenario all baked, oh, I can't wait for places like this to start testing it out. Sure. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Now, I just right-clicked in the, in the uh, text editor here, yeah. and there was a command palette that showed up. Okay. So what are, I mean, okay, add cursor above, cursor below, you know, selection. Uh, the command palette is F1. I mean, this is a huge selection of things here to just allow you to work with your code better. Yep. Because as we, we don't limit what we're bringing, like, because it's on based on Monaco, you do get that experience. This all just comes along with the ride. Mm -hmm. Very cool stuff. Um, there's a question. How about on-prem or self-hosting the service? So... We are, like, for example, in the future, you will be able to add try.net into your Azure subscription and mm. work with it as yourself. Okay. Especially okay. for a huge document, like, for example, if you're a Twilio or a Pluralsight or a LinkedIn, you do want to have this running on your Azure subscription. Sure. Um, and I guess they, would, they, they may want to customize it a little bit. Oh yeah, completely customize it, and we will, we will be able to support that. Okay. And self-hosted... Is this person referring to, oh, he said it'll slash, so posted like on your blog or stand by reloading. Did that answer your question? Well, or on, on prem, not just in Azure, but you know, uh, I want to have it running in my data center at my office. No, yeah, we haven't, like we, it's interesting, but we've got that question. When I was at NDC, someone from Citibank? Yes came up to me and said, I would love to have this on-prem. And this is these are scenarios that we haven't even thought about because we really didn't design it for that. It doesn't mean it's not possible. It's just something now we have to think about. Sure. I, you mentioned it's it's hosted in containers. There, there's, and, and I'm, I'm guessing you have other containers that help orchestrate and manage at the deployment and the serving yeah. of these. You know, th to be able to repackage that, it sounds like it's, it's 
just a rethinking of how it's packaging and delivered, but because it's in a container, it's possible. Not, it's completely possible. Yeah. Um, but that also brings us to the thing of, and, and, and this is where when you're building something out of genuine joy, like what we're doing and what so many people do every day, is that people are beginning to ask us how much it costs and we're just like, <laughs> uh, money? I don't know. <laughs> but like that, that's a big thing. So we're, we're, we're getting more biz dev people involved to, to figure that out because on the engineering team, I can't make up a number. I could tell you it's a dollar and the biz dev team would kill me. I, I just need um, new toys every now and again so that <laughs> uh, whatever. Somebody will figure out how to make money. <laughs> No, so I yeah, but those are things like when when we think about the enterprise, um, so, like the enterprise solution, and you know we understand a lot of people in the enterprise. Your code can't be public, so mm -hmm. you have to make sure that, you know, that that goes into costs and cost driven and how we're implementing this. Um, someone had a question about falls falls. That try.net slash docs page kills my Chrome. Really? Oh, no. Um. I am going to try that out because um, if, if you, if actually, when you see things like that, let's bring up the GitHub issue page. Oh, and, sure. Yeah, because. Is there a link to the GitHub p issue page here? Ooh, uh, about that. Yeah, because you've been pressing a whole bunch of buttons. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Which is great. But if you go to try let's just uh, we'll have to type it in man because there's no way for me to post it's not it linked here yeah um but if you but you could, could post it into the into the skype uh oh, yeah text message you have that um bruno says that it worked fine on on his using chrome because the only the only recent issue that has popped up is um with firefox We've had that, and I actually wanted to bring that up just in case somebody has that experience. Blame it on Firefox. Uh, All no, that it's... quantum computing they're doing. <laughs> no, it, it has to do with, um, maybe you can share this with the people. Um, when people run try.net um, in, in, in Firefox, and then they try to edit the code, the iframe blocks them from editing the code. Oh, and it is actually a known issue that came out later last year with um, Monaco itself. Mm, okay. Yeah, and it's con it's open, and we are like my team. We just found out about it Thursday, and they are on it in Redmond because I'm in Seattle. If I was in Redmond, I would actually be sitting at the PM's office saying, "How can we fix this together and get this done?" Um, so we've been actively supporting them to fix this issue so our Firefox friends can have a good experience as well. So so this is uh, github.com slash dot net slash try is the project. And then yeah. this is the issue list. So um, the folks that had all kinds of uh, suggestions there in the chat room, um, go ahead and click through here and, and vote up the things that you think are valuable. Um, you know, give a give a thumbs up on the things that you like. Then drop a line. Let let Maria and, and the team know. Uh, you know, hey, here's some things that we'd like to see. Save code. Yeah, there's right. We were talking about that keyboard shortcuts. I love being able to do my favorite keyboard shortcut in Visual Studio is the Alt up and down. And being able to move a line of code up and down and Can just see everything. Can you try that doesn't work? Oh my gosh, it does work. I, I was doing it. I think you did it. I don't know if we, we did it during uh, another... Look at that! Yes! And I Love was like, it! I remember you showed it to me and I was like, yes! It's like, right? this is like eye candy for me. It's like, uh, because I hate copy and paste and move a line of code somewhere. No, alt up and down. Ha ha ha! I remember when you first showed that to me when we were pairing on Nerd Dinner. I was like, what is... Because I'd never done it before, and I was like, "This makes my life amazing," and it's like it's something I constantly share with people. So, but and there's also this one, right? If I highlight a bunch of lines of code, I can move all of them. <laughs> the the magic. The I know, magic. right? Yeah. It, it's it's stupid simple things that <laughs> they just make me smile. But yeah, but that those are things like we want to know what you expect to see. We want to know. Um, 
where it's not working in the browser, um, the issues that you faced. Mm. Um, we want to know all those things because, for example, the mobile one was a huge one. And because of people's community conversations and people bringing it up, we were able to have a sit down with our VS Code team, like with the Monaco team to say, you know, this is why we need this support. So no paste option. I, we were able to paste code in. Yeah, some of sometimes it's just like people ha, didn't work for them at that moment, and but but we appreciate it. Sure, um, we absolutely. In again as like support for you get packages. Yeah, was uh, there as well. But this is a place where yes, we actively like we actively go in it. We we label them. We follow through. You're um, triaging. Yeah, we do. You're making sure that cool new features work. Um. So. Always got to have a great screenshot on the front of your. And I think name. that yeah 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 yeah. So. And soon, and that has all the people who have done it before us. You'll see all the names of the great uh, people who have been leading the way in C sharp for us. And if you know any, please make a pull request. Like you forgot so and so. I'm like, I don't want to forget anyone. Sure. I, it, it's great that you're not trying to to steal the thunder from from some of these other organizations. You're just trying to make it easier for folks to get that full VS Code experience in the browser. Yeah, exactly. And using and, and make just the ramp up to try.net or to, is that your cat? Or to C Sharp. My cat? What cat? I thought I saw a cat. I could be seeing things. Deja vu. Right? Is it over there? No, that's that's the light that is keeping the green oh, okay. behind me. <laughs> that wasn't me. No, no, and I've. Yes, uh, someone I've, asked. Yes, you cannot use console read key. No, those are one of the things that we are blocking right now. Right, or or console read line. Yeah, we cannot. You cannot do that. Right, it's strictly write some information out to the console. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna close that one. Um, so there were some other things that I saw um, in the in the .NET docs around the, the API stuff. So this is great being able to walk through and it remembers where you are in the tutorial in the docs. Yes. Um, but I love in the API, they were showing me- uh, uh, no. Daytime? Yes. That's yes. A, I, I know it's in a couple of places, but daytime is the one I always remember. Right, that's like, uh -huh. it, that's like a basic one that people are like, oh yeah, I know how to do that, right? So. <laughs> System date time. Yeah, it should be. I think it might be that one. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I think it is. Let's so there's see. all kinds of. Where is it? There were. There it is. Yeah. So here is, you know, let's create a new date time and then let's write it out. And okay, we wrote a comment here so you can see this is what it should display for American culture, but you can actually hit run and see it run there. So this is. This is the experience that, that we want to deliver. Yeah. It's awesome. And also, it, it's, it's pretty cool when that went up. Uh, first, the docs team put it up, and we didn't know. And they said, this is doing so well. I think they got a 90% a customer satisfaction rating, and we're just like. OK. Wow. We're just like, I think it was like 90. It was ridiculous. We're like, we got it. I was like, what do you mean you got a? I was like, OK. That's a, that was a good one, and that actually that particular post um, got a lot of great feedback from our existing community. That's when they began to start noticing it. Mm -hmm. um, the quick starts was really great. Every single learner I showed it to, every single net new developer, everyone new to the platform like .NET, absolutely loved it. When we introduced this feature, I feel like the .NET community itself, the existing .NET community itself, were like, we 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 love this. Uh, do you know? Um, I forget Udi's last name. Dahan? Yes. Okay. He, he saw this on Twitter and he was like, um, I want this in the docs right now. Yeah. Like in his docs right now. And that was that was nice to hear that we had so many people in the .NET community excited about what we were doing. Oh my gosh, yes. So um, I'm being teased in the chat room. Yesterday I was going through a, a, a thing of, do I want to use date time or date time offset? And, and yes, I need to spend some more time with date time offset. <laughs> um, it looks like the Angular debugger extension is causing fossils an issue in his, okay. in his browser. That's a good note. Let me write that down. And that's that's augury, A-U-G-A-R-Y. Okay. And, of course, the chat saves with the 
the Twitch video, if, if we go back and view it again, we'll see everything everybody said in Twitch chat. Oh. It's there forever. Or until uh. 30 days goes up and Twitch removes <laughs> it. Okay. <laughs> Firefox. Because one of the things that I noticed that I um, that was also blocking me with Google Chrome when I was using Try.net was the Grammarly extension. Oh. That was blocking some of the things to Try.net. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> Hi, future people watching this VOD and see the chat. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always good to have a list of like extensions that we are aware of. Yeah, popular ones that folks want to try. Like, I, I can't imagine an ad blocker would block this. No. Um, but, gosh, it just feels feels easy to use, feels simple to just jump in and right, start doing some simple math. Because um, uh, one of the like, things I want to make people aware of is that right now the acquisition process of Try.net is a little bit tedious, right? Mm. Um we are actively, actively, and I, I'm writing down the use case scenarios and doing user testing on how to make this a more reasonable experience. Because I've been working with it for such a long time that I'm just like, of course this makes sense. Um, you know what, there's no I, run button on this. Yeah. Oh, there it is over here. But oh, it's going it? to go into the logs. Oh, oh so my can, log. Your log is just out of, out of control. All I did was, uh, there it is. There it is. Hmm. Ooh, that's neat. <laughs> what did you just do? I went to highlight the text, and it and didn't it just moved it over. It dragged let's the whole. Let's go to the home page and see. Let's take your code and put it over in the home page and see the results. The home page, which is just like. I, I just want to drag that. around my log for a little bit. Is that okay? Yeah, have the fun. <laughs> like, I'm just like, I'm like, how much have you been pressing that button? Say, like, mean happy, happy pressing. Sorry. <laughs> um, the message about augury. Okay, that's an interesting. The message. All right, so I'm gonna paste that back in to do just a, a sign of pi over two, and of course it comes back with one. That's kind of what you'd expect. Yeah. So. It went one 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 one. Um, I'm just I'm just sorry. I'm reading just to make sure. Like it sees augury. It's, is it is it augury? Or yeah. A u g a r y. Yeah it's, yeah, it's causing. It's just looping over and over with a message. Okay. Hmm. It even recognizes Visual Studio shortcuts. Uh, can I throw an exception? Can I throw an exception? Oh! oh no, there's yeah. only one type of exception that I would throw. And that is, of course, throw new null reference exception. My message? Duh. Oh, look at all that. Well, it's a oh, it's a target invocation exception. Yeah. So, so we're kind of seeing under the covers a little bit, and it's not just my null reference exception that I'm seeing. No. All right. But the, um, yeah. someone asked, "Is is this the page for try.net? Yeah, it is the current page, but I am working on a nicer page. I'm actually doing that this weekend. Making it look better, cooler. Uh yeah, like it's been, I it's it's looked cooler locally on my machine for a very long time, so I don't have your <laughs> But um, but only there's building things for yourself. I don't know. But like um, of course we have to go through um, user testing and accessibility to make sure it looks per like it works for all. Um, when Try.net was first put on the docs, we did get a lot of um, questions about accessibility, so we've been working with. VS Code to make sure we have everything in place for that as well. You're reminding me here. I forgot to turn on closed captions. <gasps> oh, Jeff. I know. I'm so bad. Yes. It should always just be enabled. Yeah, it should. Like, like, come on, OBS. Remember this. And that should start appearing on both Twitch and Mixer in just a second. So um, we mentioned about theming. Now, one of the questions that I get from a, a couple of the folks that are in the um, in the chat room. They like me using the dark theme in Visual Studio Code and in Visual Studio. Um, it, it right. It helps with some some of the folks who have neurological issues. Yeah. Um, is that what is that theme going to be available as you move forward here? Some of those the standard themes that we have in Visual Studio. Yes. 
it should be available right now. If you could go back to Dove, because I'm trying to figure out what broke. Um, it was me. Yeah, so if we go over to the docs and then if you go to set predefined theme. Oh, VS Dark. Yeah, if you set, click that. <gasps> yes. Okay, so um, can I go I... back? Wait a sec, wait a sec. So the iframe has this source. So can I just copy that and navigate to there? No, like you could you try it. I could try it. And I've I've gone too far. So it blocks me from just navigating right to it. It's going to be like, no, 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 no. Okay. Um, Someone's saying, do something that would break the compiler. Why? That's just rude. No. We say no, sir. Or madame. Um, so. So I can't paste. Um, where'd it go? Right, so this um, this configuration here, where it's specifying the configure Monaco editor VS Dark. Yeah. How, how do I paste that in if I want to apply that configuration to the front of um, the the front page of try.net? I, oh. I explained that poorly. Right. If I want this page to be in the dark theme. That isn't going to be in the dark theme right now. Okay. The, so. Um, it, but yeah. you could play around with your F12 tooling. Really? And set theme. Is that like a command that I can? No. You actually have to add it into your your, your JavaScript file. Um, right. So these these commands here, these are being. How are they being sent to the server? So so that I could uh, apply the theme to this page. Um, right, because uh, clearly when I click the button here for set a predefined theme, it, it's it's doing something to reset this. It is, and I can am pulling up the code right now. I just want to make sure I'm not lying to you. Oh, some of these funny, funny people in the chat room are saying, okay, can you search them from the beginning? I missed it. <laughs> So, sorry, what? Start what? Can, can you start? Can you start the stream over again? I missed what happened at the beginning. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. Um, so. Hi, my name's Jeff. Hi. <laughs> this is Jeff. Maria. She's over there. <laughs> uh, we're just hanging out right now. Making stuff happen. Doing the thing. Uh, some folks are saying, "Let's capture the network packets and replay it." Can we just say set theme VS dark? Run that in the console. They're figuring out how to run this before we are. That's the whole. That's the whole plan. Like that's. Uh, just make it a just thing. Make it a thing. Whoa. No, I mean like that's that's how we want to. That's what what we want people to try these. Uh, set theme is not defined. Um, oh, give oh, give you that fire back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm over here in the docs page. Whoa! Did you go to a console log? Yep, I'm in the console log. And if I try running... Uh, set theme works over here. Yeah. I, think we, I think we completely blocked it on that page. Mm. Operation aborted. Can I say VS blue? It won't. VS light? Nope. VS Fritz? That's not yes, a thing. Yes, that will definitely work. It'll, um, it'll break it. <laughs> it will work. Why will give you a green color? Because that's the... I forget the team. You I, I work with folks who don't know sports. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry, like, I, like I, I can, I have a perfect excuse. I did. I was not uh, born. Uh, like I wasn't born in not America. Not American. Okay. I'm not American, so I was like, I do not, I do not know what's happening. <laughs> well, I'm just like, what? Scott is the one you should get. Like Scott's the worst with sports. I think I might know more. We yeah, we can we can beat up on, and he calls it sports ball just to make it even more in our face. Holy nested functions, Batman. What? 
uh, folks are looking at in the chat room are looking at how the JavaScript. Um, <laughs> and they're they're figuring out how this works. Yeah, you can. You can actually look at the JavaScript and get pretty far. Um, not all that far. No, let me take that back. You can get somewhere. You can get somewhere. You can you can figure out how to work. You wouldn't be able to take advantage and um, implement this on your own personal blogs. I'm not saying that that should be a challenge that people should go and do. Please don't. Um, please do not do that at all. Yeah, we'll get mad. I will. I will personally come and find you. And there will be pain. <laughs> yeah. So what we do. Um, so the way we're setting the themes is that we we actually create a JavaScript function. Um, the doc. You could probably see it if you went right clicked and saw view source. Um, yeah, they were doing things like click here and seeing this method. Yeah. Set source code button. Look at this. The, the, ooh, that function looks like fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Set source code. There's the function. Yeah, they need what they have some event listeners, add an event listener that's waiting for it. So it calls post message to editor. And we could look at that. Yeah, it has a post message API. Very cool stuff. Over on the right, click events. I don't have any events. I'm in edge. Uh -huh. So we have your blessings to trying to implement this on anything that's not a block. No, you don't. You have no blessings yet. So we have the blessings to try to implement this on anything that's not a block. Nope, you do not have that. You do not have that. You will have, like, the thing is that right now, don't rush to implement it. There's so many great things coming. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll have better ways for you to implement it that isn't a hack, that is genuine, and we won't have to block you. So do you have any kind of a roadmap listed out here that, oh, look at that, try.net roadmap. Yeah, it's not up there. Um, oh, it is there. A little bit. A little bit. But just to give you, like, okay, let's look at this, right? Um, because since writing this roadmap, things have, gen gen like, over the past two weeks, things have really changed. Mm -hmm. um, when we originally thought about try.net, it was really about learning and creating engaging content in several places. Mm -hmm. One of them was to go after, um, you know, just improve our general documentation on .NET and docs.microsoft.com. And that was really with console applications. And we've, we've, we've completed that. We've actually successfully done that. Okay. The next step that we are working towards is learn.net, which is like you kind of know the syntax and the features and you're comfortable with console style output and, and writing func methods and classes and all this stuff. Um, the next one is like, how do I actually go and build an application? How do I actually start feeling comfortable in building an actual app? How do we have long lived sessions? So being able to stop and come back. Um, and that's what we're working around right now is that, you know, ASP.NET core kind of experience. Mm -hmm. And with that ability, we're going to actually have the ability for someone to have a button um, right in the browser. We're just like, okay, you've done it. You built your first ASP.NET application. Let's go and build more off on your machine. Let's go and take advantage of all the cool things that come with VS Code and Visual Studio. So you'll have the ability to click and open in Visual Studio. Literally bring, bring what I was working on in the browser locally, uh, OneDrive, Dropbox, something like that. Get it locally on my machine. Yeah. And then go. And then just go. And not Chrome extensions. Look at this comment. No, 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 no not Chrome extensions. It's not going to be that. Um, then the next one is once we have that and we have these scenarios based, you know, baked out and you're able to have Signal R support and ASP.NET Core support and all that support, let's start making this infrastructure, you know, available to third party people. Mm -hmm. And currently, we're, I'm in conversations with LinkedIn Learning, which really isn't a third party, but kind of is a third party in, you know, having this on their subscription and having this experience outside of Microsoft 
direct content. Then the next one is your web code snippets in your blogs and your labs. So for example, when you did your workshop yesterday, imagine sending people to try.net and you're just like, here you go, here are the instructions. Um, we also will support some unit tests in there as well. Right. And then no. the next one, which is like the goal of the goal is lighting up .NET content everywhere. Being able to do a Bing search and see a runnable snippet right in Bing. Being able to have team and Slack snippets, right? But GitHub, which wasn't on this, you know, overall themes, has come to fruition. We're actually actively doing that, where mm. you can load your just, like we're calling it the just loader, okay. and you're able to do that. So it, it works, uh, as, as I told you, security review, but yeah. That's pretty cool. So thinking out loud, right, we can, we already know how in ASP.NET Core to use OAuth sign-ins. So GitHub could be just another OAuth sign-in. If I could go to try.net, log in with my GitHub ID, and actually new folks to development won't have a GitHub ID, but if they had one, they could work on code in try.net and then so save it to their GitHub. Exactly. So another thing that we've been having conversation with the docs team, like let's look at the long lived, you know, sessions, right? Working with a code base over time. So imagine I'm brand new to .NET, um, brand new to C Sharp, and I've gone on to docs.microsoft.com and I'm just like, okay, I'm using my first ASP.NET application. It's been 20 minutes. Um, I'm kind of bored. I will actually be triggered. Like, do you want to save your information? Yes. When you click that button, it will trigger something that will say, okay, do you have a GitHub account, for example, or you can do OneDrive or whatever is your, your preference. Um, we will actually start that process for you, create a repo for you in the background. Mm -hmm. Right? And then, um, so and then save it in there. Exactly. So when you come in, you sign up and we'll say, which, which, if you have multiple, which one do you want to load? Like we already have sure. that, like, so that those things, how do we select the right one for you to load? So okay. these are all things that, where will that content, where will those long live sessions be? And it does make a logical sense to actually keep it in places that people know. So GitHub is a good one, OneDrive, Dropbox, sure. like anything that you use. If someone has a Dropbox account, perfect. Google Drive. Like Google Drive, yeah, even um, that one, yeah. Even that one. I'm joking, of course, of course. I, don't, don't take that literally. I'm just being funny. Um, it's um, sad. So, so, okay. Thinking out loud, you brought up you brought up the workshop yesterday, and we talked briefly about this the other day. But I, I want to circle back to to this this idea. If if we're if we're doing something like teaching a workshop, whether it's Twitch or Mixer, because everybody uses Edge with Mixer. Yeah. And um, it'd be, right, wouldn't it be cool if as we're teaching the workshop to have the code pop up in a try.net window overlaying or right below the video for folks to be able to run some of the code, for folks to be able to contribute some code, write a unit test against what we're writing live on video. Yeah, this is like this is something that when you brought it up, I was like, I need to go and read the Twitch and Mixer documentation and also kind of think of those experiences. When people actually, because having seen people's usernames, it also helps us that people log in and yes. we're able to verify that they're a user. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I would be interested in doing an experiment with you on that. Maybe we can do a live session as we begin to improve the acquisition process of creating this Twitch plugin. Like you and I can be like. So okay, so folks in the chat room, what what do you think of of that idea of being able to see a window just beneath the Twitch video that has has a snippet of code that Maria and I would be working on here on video, and being able to write unit tests against that or execute it locally there, and and be able to tinker with it directly on your browser as you're watching Twitch. What do you think of that? Let us know in the chat room. And uh, same thing with Mixer folks also. You know, the eight people that are over there on Mixer right now. Interactive coding for the win. All right. There's a start. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think there's definitely... Oh, yeah, here we go. Sinclair Nader likes it. Federico says very cool. All right. 
There we go. We got three people. That's a consensus. <laughs> yes, it's enough. It's enough. All we needed was one, really. <laughs> Um, or even none of you, just ourselves. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. Oh, it, that's this is a good point from Janesco. Yesterday, I was I had this thing where I was going back and forth with date time versus date time offset. It, absolutely. So yesterday, while we were in the workshop, to be able to show that back and forth, and even for for some of that here, mm, so the folks are keying that in and working with it in their local. If they're working on that in their local try dot nets. Similar to how I would pair program with you, Maria, using live share on the main video screen here. Yeah. If we could pick off, here's a suggestion from somebody in their try.net window, right? Almost have it docked or like a console somewhere here so we can see here's yeah. what folks are keying and be able to grab that and say, oh, okay, well, here, let's try this. That's been suggested by Janescu with yeah. daytime offset. That's not bad. That would, that's a really cool idea. Like... um after this, I'm going to probably go. Um, I always have these squiggly, if you guys can see it, like doesn't help, it's on yellow. Whenever people talk, I manually draw it. I'm just like, okay, now let's create. Mm. So now I'm, I'm, I'm sketching again. So Skyhoshi, is, you're correct. Interactive coding, um, VS Live Share. We were doing that yesterday on the workshop. Um, I was hosting in Visual Studio 2017, but, but Julie Lerman and Shane Boyer were connecting over using... Uh, they were using VS Code locally, and you can do VS Code to VS Code sharing like that, but um, it's very limited, right? That that type of anybody being able to key in over top of your browser, I don't think in a presentation like this is something that while Maria and I might be working on something and showing it, we want everybody to be able to just change our code right here in the browser. But to have those kind of go into a queue using try.net so that you don't have to have anything installed locally. Yeah. For for us as presenters, as as folks leading a workshop, to be able to see, here's some suggestions in a suggestion uh, queue, that might be a pretty good idea. And that, that idea of a suggestion queue is a little bit more than what try.net is trying to accomplish. But yeah. you're trying to get them the ability to execute and try that stuff. Yes. So, right, we would have to build on the ability to say, well, send this to Jeff, and it goes to a queue somewhere, and we do whatever with it. But I love the idea. It, as, I, as I get more into streaming, and gosh, Maria, I've been talking about this so much in our team chat room, and I apologize. Yeah, you love, you love, you, you, you yes, you, you are, you are the streaming uh, royal at the moment. I, reigning royal. I'm, I'm doing this a lot. Yeah, um, the reigning royal, yeah. But for, and I'm, and I'm thinking, looking forward to .NET Conf, um, our annual virtual conference. Yeah, I can't wait to try .NET there. It was showcased there a year ago. That's when we first announced it. Almost yes. a year ago, in September. And I can't wait for people to be using it because before we were just like, oh, this is it. And this is what it looks like. And I can't wait for people to actually use it at the next .NET Conf, like actually use it as we're doing the material. Oh my gosh, yes. I think there's... I, I think there's, you know, just adding that ex extension onto it for for somebody who's trying to teach a class, yeah. um, if it right, and not just us, but you mentioned some of those trainers out there, plural sites, LinkedIn yes. Learning, so, Wintelect so Now. About right? it, if you're doing so, look at what Docs does, for example, where they've customized it to do what they need to do. So someone can actually have a step by step and and actually go through in the browser. We are also um, one thing that um, Matthew Gertz, who's an he Matthew Gertz is one of the engineers over at Microsoft. He's like a what's he like a principal soft? He's been here since '93 or something like that. Um, he wants us to do unit tests. So think about when you're able to check if someone's work is correct. We've been using with working with Belt College to do those kind of experiments as well, okay. where students will actually be able to submit their homework. And we'll be able to run tests to make sure, like, okay, do this, try that. And Roslyn has been able to do this for, like, for a while. Sure. And just taking advantage of everything that we have and just bring it to life. Um, I also want to call out something that uh, Check Digits wrote, which is, which captures a lot of what we've been saying about try.net. Live share is not the same as the idea that we've shown, right? Mm -hmm. um, browser windows with coding abilities. Um, because what we're trying to do in LiveShare is the ability for you to work together. It's Google Docs, the ability for you to yeah. work together on a piece of code. 
Oh, Google uh, Docs, Office 365. Office 365. Office 365. Yes, Office 365. Um, but what Live, what Try.net does is the ability for you to remove any hassle of having a tool. Is the ability for you to really just do what exactly what we're doing to try. Right? That's the whole point. Like, try it out. Yeah, I don't, uh -huh. right? To be clear, I do not have Visual Studio open. No. Nope. Visual Studio Code, no full Visual Studio. It's, this is all running inside of Edge. Exactly. And, and think about, like, for a lot, I'm presuming that a lot of people on this um, channel right now are active developers. Um, the ability for you just to try things out without having to add it to your code base. Um, like, we would love it if someone's like, oh, I saw this really cool thing with C Sharp 7.1. I'm going to try it out and try it .net. I'm like, oh, it worked perfectly. Let's go and take it over into my existing code. Like, don't mess, like, if you're a person who's like me, I don't like, like messing around with my, my baby when I know it's working the way it works. Sure. Um, I like to open up another window and try it out. And these are these are really cool because I find myself these days having VS Code for all my front end, Visual Studio for all my back end, um, and Try.net for my experimentation. It's become my flow. And uh, mm. I was talking to other people who are doing this, and I was like, oh, this is exciting. <laughs> Some people are using it the same way I do. Very cool stuff. All right. Um, and Janescu is saying, uh, like, Twitch has extensions, Mixer has extensions. Do a thing with try.net on both. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, like, maybe we should do that once we, uh, once we get a couple of things fixed. Not fixed. Um, up and running. A little I bit more around your embedding, uh, feature set. Embedding scenario. Maybe yeah. we should do a, uh, live, you know, live share, live coding of us building that extension. Um, screaming to the community, help us. It works on my machine. It doesn't work everywhere else. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. And they'll just leverage containers so that way we don't have to say, it works on mine. I don't know why it isn't working on yours. Right. Everything's in a container. It's, so it it's should just be right working there. On yeah. Oh my gosh. Too funny. All right. Well, I think, and, and I'm not seeing any other questions out here. I think that's as far as we want to go today, isn't it? Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? You wanted to show us? No, like you guys have given us awesome ideas. Um, continue to, if you see anything, continue to use try.net. Continue to push it to its limit. Um, don't do anything bad. <laughs> um, be, be, be good citizens of the internet. We need more of those in the world. We need more um, people who are good. Don't do good stuff business. like one divided by zero and expect it to just work. Oh, that's the first. Yeah, a lot of people are like, oh, let me see if that works. Um, yes, do no harm. Yes. Um, go on to the issues. Um, let us know what you're bringing up. Let us know if you have any suggestions and just mark it as suggestions. Like, I would love to see this. Like, I go in and we read those community suggestions. We enjoy them. We add the docs team into those conversations. Mm. Um, if you notice a bug, tell us. Let us know what <coughs> Firefox or Chrome or Edge that you're seeing these in. Um, so far, we haven't seen any issues with Edge. Not that we're bragging or anything. Because Edge is amazing. No, I can't back that up. Yeah, like um, we're anything, but yeah, but the, um, this is actually an interesting comment. Code is not editable. Let's turn that around. Okay, so maybe there's a problem with the with the browser there. But if we turn that around, it might be neat to have read-only code. Yes. Um, but that code is not like sometimes, you know, the way people um, uh, like men talk to, you know, do their their comments, their issues, name their issues, you get lost. Mm -hmm. So when you're like code isn't editable, what it was was the um, the Firefox issue that I mentioned earlier right. was once you run the code, um, you can't edit it. So it actually blocks your modification. And that's a known issue with um, with Firefox, with Firefox and and uh, Monaco, that sure. the, the editor we're using. Mm -hmm. what, what I'm thinking is um, if I'm going to embed something like this in my documentation, I, yeah. I might not want people to be able to change the code. Yes. So you will be able to actually put in a read-only parameter and boom. Terrific. All right. Yeah. Just, and it will not, you will not have, no one will edit it. It's just like read-only. And it, it's just read-only at that point. 
It's on you. We don't. Yeah. All right. Well, I th what do you say we wrap it up there? Yeah. Very cool. I'm going to go back to the two face. There we go. The two up. Thank you so much for joining me t uh, today, Maria. This was really cool. I appreciate you taking time to show us a little bit about, about try.net and where it kind of fits in here. I love the idea of using this as part of a teaching experience, not just, not just because, um, it gets, it gets .net in everybody's hands without having to install a bunch of stuff, but we can start to do things now to make it easier to document and give people access to everything in .net. Yes. Um, and, and it's something that folks with uh, free code camp and stuff like that, they've been able to do for a while because JavaScript runs in the browser. Yes. Now we've got .NET running in the browser. Yes, with the power of containers. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thanks so much uh, to everybody out there watching today. I'll be back on Tuesday with another live stream. Thanks so much for joining me today, Maria. And we'll Thank see you everybody. Me,